think I'm seeing a trend here. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? It's Emergency and welcome or welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be talking about polyamory or thruples and specifically why we're seeing so many thruples in Gen Z media. Because I know that I can't be the only one that's noticed it recently. Like we're seeing a lot of thruples, whether that be in shows like Gossip Girl, the Degrassi reboot, Fate Wing Saga, Elite. And we're just seeing a lot of thruples and that really got me thinking as to why that is and what that could necessarily mean for representation of polyamory, as well as what the current landscape of the thruple means for society as a whole. Because as you know, representation in media is often a reflection of the real world or reflects on the real world. Yeah, whatever. But before we do any of that, if you are new to the channel and like all things TV, pop culture, and fashion, and commentary, then make sure to hit that subscribe button right now. We are closely approaching 200K, so if you wanna get here before 200K, then hit that subscribe button. You can also follow me on all my social medias at Emergency, that's Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And while you're at it, if you haven't already, make sure to leave a like on this video because it helps out so, so much with the YouTube algorithm. But let's get into this. So like I said, we've been seeing an increase in thruples in TV and media, specifically in Gen Z media and with teen shows. And I think that's really interesting because at least in my TV viewing experience, or at least my consumption of media since I've been around, I haven't seen a whole lot of that prior, but I feel like in the past like three, four years, we've been seeing more non-monogamous relationships, or at least consensual non-monogamous relationships. And I feel like we're gonna be using a lot of words here when we're talking about like the whole landscape of polyamory or like thruples in TV. So let's take a step back really quick and define some things and get a full scope of what's been going on historically and as of recently. First, let's start by defining what polyamory is. According to Google, polyamory is the practice of engaging in multiple romantic and typically sexual relationships with the consent of all people involved. And this would fall under the category of a non-monogamous relationship a relationship that's not just between two people. And non-monogamy or just not being with one partner has been a thing for pretty much ever. Like it really doesn't take much to see non-monogamy in action in history. Like literally just look at any of the sculptures or art from like the Mesopotamian era, the Romans. <laughs> The Greek, like they, they, they were getting down. But as time has progressed, non-monogamy has taken on different forms and has evolved with time. Polyamory had a resurgence in the U.S. in the 60s and 70s during the whole sexual revolution when everyone was being like really hippie and loose around gender roles, sexuality, and other social constructs. And fast forward to more recently, we're seeing a little bit more representation of polyamory as millennials and Gen Z make up larger portions of the adult population. In fact, I came with figures. In 2016, a study published by the Journal of Sex and Marital Therapy conducted. A survey of nearly 9,000 single US adults. And that study showed that one in five people had previously been in a consensual non-monogamous relationship. And bringing that up a little bit closer to the present, in 2020, Tinder did a study of over 3,400 Gen Z Tinder users. And in that study, about one fifth participants said that they'd be open to exploring polyamory. So it seems like in modern day, polyamory is definitely on the rise, especially within millennials and Gen Z. And at least anecdotally, I could say that I've seen a lot more consensual open relationships, especially within the queer community. With all that said though, monogamy by and large does hold out as the norm for most people in relationships, but it's really interesting to see this rise in representation of like thruples and polyamorous relationships. And getting into that, let's break into the current media landscape of thruples and how polyamory is represented in these shows. First up, let's talk about Gossip Girl. So in Gossip Girl, this latest season, season two, we have a thruple between Aki, Audrey, and Max, two bisexual men and one straight woman. And looking at how their relationship formed, it initially started off as like this dirty secret. Like it was something that kind of just happened. And at first, at least Aki and Audrey felt kind of a ashamed about it. And there was a lot of struggle to get Aki and Audrey to not only accept the relationship themselves, but then to also be comfortable enough with coming out as a thruple, which led to a lot of turmoil with Max because he was more willing to just hop in and be out with this relationship. And at the time of this recording, the one main issue in their relationship that's a constant is communication. Like a lot of the time, two out of the three will make that one person feel kind of excluded in whatever situation they're in, whether or not that's actually the case. And coincidentally, the only time that they're actually shown to all be on the same page is in the bedroom, most of the time. Which is interesting to know. And if you've seen the new Gossip Girl, I'm sure you've seen this, but it seems like, at least in season two, once all three of them became a thruple, that kind of was their personality. Like, that is all of their character. Like, the entirety of their character is to exist in this relationship. Before that in season one, I feel like their characters had a little bit more depth going on. They had a little bit more going for them. This season, the way that they're presented, it's like they are the three of them. But let's move on to the next show. We then could turn our eyes to the Thruple and Fate Wink Saga, RIP because I know it got canceled. But in that relationship, we have Riven, Beatrix, and 
Dane. Again, with the pairing of two guys and one girl. And this is interesting because they're all kind of characterized as like the evil trio, and each of them have their own thing against each of the protagonists of this show. Like none of them are the heroes, if that makes sense. And the struggle in their relationship is that no one is really honest about what they want. Like Dane clearly wants Riven more, and it kind of seems like there could be a reciprocation there, but I don't know if Riven is quite there yet. And that friction along with like some other things with the plot kind of caused their thruple to dissolve a bit. So all that we were really able to get from the relationship is that it was very angsty and that they were not the good guys. And then we move on to Elite, and Elite is very interesting because it's not an American show. And there are multiple polyamorous relationships in the show. First off, you have the thruple between Carla, Polo, and Christian. One bisexual man, one guy whose sexuality was not really confirmed, and a straight woman. And how their relationship was played out was basically they brought in a third Christian because they wanted to spice up their relationship. Polo was feeling unfulfilled, so they added another man to the mix. First, they showed this as being a strictly sexual relationship, but then emotions were brought into it, and that's where things got a little tricky. Things fell apart really quickly due to jealousy, and things got really messy because of it, and people just started tricking each other, manipulating each other. And these characters, once again, at least for Carla and especially Polo, they were not seen as the protagonists. In fact, Polo was very much antagonist, at least in the later seasons. And then you have the other short-lived thruple of the show, Omar, Ander, and Patrick. And this is the first thruple on the list that's between three gay men. And like I said, it was very short-lived. The dynamic was more transactional, meaning it was just for, for some fun, if you get what I'm talking about. And again, this thruple kind of spurred as an attempt to keep Omar and Ander's relationship afloat because they were both kind of tempted to be with Patrick. And I guess the way that they saw fit where it wouldn't be cheating or they wouldn't be hurting each other's feelings is if they just let Patrick into the relationship and they both got to up with him. And now that I think about that and say that out loud, that's kind of messed up. <laughs> but the reason this double broke up was because of, again, jealousy, where Patrick gets jealous of what Omar and Ander have and the genuine love they have for each other. And he tries to get a piece of that himself by manipulating them to break up and strain their relationship. Then you have a show like Degrassi, which I personally haven't seen yet, the new one, where they have another thruple between the characters Zig, Esme, and Frankie. And apparently in that case, both Zig and Esme were in a relationship first. And then Esme brought in Frankie to help keep Zig and Esme's relationship afloat. Oh, and in this case, this stuff was between one guy and two girls. And to cut to the chase, the reason why this relationship ended was because of jealousy. Are we seeing a theme here? And the last example that I have, I don't really know if I can count it as a thruple, but definitely was like a non-monogamous moment, was in Heartbreak High. And the little fling that Harper, Dusty, and Malachi had, and I'm not sure if I talked about this in my full Heartbreak High review, if you haven't seen that, you should go check that out. But that hookup, I don't know if I can say that it's completely consensual because it kind of seemed a little predatory of Harper and Dustin because Malachi was one intoxicated, they all were, but he was also just reeling from the fact that he broke up with his girlfriend, was literally just brutalized by the police and was in a very fragile mental state and they kind of took that and ran with that and hooked up with him. And it seems like because of that, there was a lot of shame associated with their dynamic. You even see things like Malachi questioning his sexuality afterwards, as well as Dusty shaming and blaming Harper for having the little intimate relations, even though that he was very much in on it as well. And since this is the one time thing I put this last in the list because it kind of, it doesn't necessarily count as much, I feel like, in comparison to the others. But it's also important to note that Harper and Dustin were seen as the antagonists and villains in this story. Now, why did I run through all these? For one, we're talking about the rise of thruples in media, and those are the thruples in media. But two, because it's important and interesting to see the trends in representation of thruples in media. The main trend here in all these instances is that they're pretty much all in high school. And that's a whole different discussion. I made a whole video talking about why Hollywood's so afraid to make a college show or like a show that's not in high school. The talks about young people, but that is an important trend to note. Also, it's interesting to note that the predominant layout of this thruple is between one girl and two guys. Usually one straight woman and two guys that are not straight, or at least are questioning their sexuality. What else do these have in common? Usually when it comes to the thruples we listed, a lot of them are antagonistic, or the thruples consist of antagonists all being together, or at least people that aren't friends with or supporting the protagonist. So you have Aki, Max, and Audrey, which if you've seen up to this point in Gossip Girl Season 2, spoilers. They aren't the best friends with Julian and Zoya, who are the protagonists of that show. Beatrix, Dane, and Ribbon are quite literally the antagonists to the main cast of fairies for a good portion of the series. Harper and Dusty are some of the antagonists of Heartbreak High, and then Carla and Polo, as we've mentioned before. And the last and possibly biggest trend that I've seen in all these relationships is that they usually end or have conflict because of jealousy. Okay, cool. These shows all have similar vibes when it comes to displaying throuples. 
Why is it important? Well, it becomes really important when you kind of zoom out and look at how this affects the greater scope of media and society as a whole. If you've been here for a while, you've heard me say this many, many times before, but representation really does matter because what you see on screen, if you have not seen it very much in your real life, is what you're going to think is just reality or the norm, which is why we say it's really important to have racial representation, queer representation and the like, because for one, it gives these communities visibility, both to their own community as well as to other communities that may not interact with them on a daily basis. So the way that these things are portrayed, and specifically for this video, throuples are portrayed, is really important because, as we mentioned before, although polyamory may be on the rise, it's not the norm. It's not the predominant way people have relationships. And especially since these relationships play out in shows that are geared towards teens and young adults, the way that throuples and non-monogamous relationships are presented hold weight in people's perceptions of them. So just based on the examples that I've seen, going off of nothing else, I'd be led to assume that throuples are these kind of taboo relationships that just don't work because of jealousy, which just isn't true. <laughs> but because that's just the way that they're predominantly represented, that's what someone will be led to believe, or at least will be one of their first interactions with a polyamorous relationship. In my opinion, I think this is just an interesting case of giving something representation while also sort of disincentivizing the exploration of those relationships, if that makes sense. Ultimately showing that by default, monogamy is more stable. When you consistently show non-monogamous relationships falling through because of jealousy or them not being the good guys, you know? But again, that's not true because as we've seen with pretty much every show, then monogamous relationships be dramatic and unfaithful. <laughs> And I also think that there's something to be said about the whole power dynamic in the representation of these throuples. In a lot of the cases where a relationship will become polyamorous, it's usually an act initiated by one partner to try and save a relationship. And usually that character trying to save the relationship is the woman in the relationship, which is giving really interesting messaging about how these dynamics work, showing that if your relationship isn't working and you feel like you're about to lose your man, get another person there. But then you know it's not gonna work out anyway because jealousy is gonna happen, yada, yada, yada. It's also really interesting to note that for a lot of these relationships in the shows, when it's one girl and two guys, the common fear in these relationships that becomes like that communication issue is that the girl is afraid that the two guys are going to go off and be with each other. Like that's a whole episode in Gossip Girl, which can be kind of problematic because it's implying that out of the options, a bisexual guy is going to choose to be with a man over a woman, even though that y'all are in a polyamorous relationship where all three of you are meant to share the power, which kind of perpetuates some of the stereotypes about bisexuality in relationships. But you know, conversation for a different day, I guess. But this is all really important to consider when we're talking about how these relationships are portrayed in media. Now I can already I already see some of y'all calling this a stretch, being like, Remy, you're really reaching here to make this seem problematic. And I'll admit, do I think that the direct intention of them including polyamorous relationships or throuples in these shows is meant to like dissuade people from doing that or just give throuples a bad rap? No, I don't think that the genuine intention is to do that. I just think it's important to understand how media can be interpreted by different people, especially when that media is of an underrepresented group, or at least from a group or community that is not considered to be the norm. And I guess that leads me to the last question of, is all of this a good thing or a bad thing? And honestly, I can't say. I'm not one to say. Polyamorous relationships or throuples are real things for people. So as someone who's never been in a polyamorous relationship, I personally wouldn't feel comfortable being like, oh, this is good representation or bad representation. And I don't really think that that's the point of this video. But I did think that this is a good opportunity for both you and me to learn a little bit more about polyamory and break down how it's currently being portrayed in some of the most popular shows right now. But yeah, that's gonna be it for me for this video. Now I wanna hear from you. Have you been in a non-monogamous relationship before? Are you currently in one? And if you're not, would you consider being in one? If so, let me know down in the comments. What are your thoughts on the rise of the throuple in media? I'd love to hear from you. But thank you so much for watching. Again, if you're new, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Follow me on my socials at Emergency. And if you haven't already, make sure to leave a like on this video because it helps out so, so much. Other than that, y'all, I have an emergency and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.